Uh, we are going to be having a masterclass on business analysis. I know we are all here. We are all excited to get into this to see what we are going to be learning today to uh, be, you know, more knowledge inclined at the end of this, uh, at the end of the session. But before we go ahead, I would just like to ask a question. OK, I'd like to ask a question. Just a moment. OK, so I put up my screen and I would just like to get your thoughts on something. OK, so just give me a moment. OK. All right. So I want everyone to take a look at the screen at the moment. Everyone, everyone on the call. All right. Everyone should take a look at my screen at the moment. I want to ask a question. And I would like to get your response, of, of course. All right. Today's session is all about going to be, you know, asking questions and answering questions. Because the way this will be memorable to you is if you actually interact. When you interact, then you fully understand. And whatever it said, it said in the session, you would um, have a higher tendency to remember each and every one of those things. Okay. So first question. We are going to have a lot of questions down the line. But first question. Okay. Again, I want everyone to take a look at my screen. You see, I have this guy at this point. All right, you can see this guy at this point and he's smiling, he's, you know, he's, he's, very, he's excited. He's walking from home, you know, just moving smoothly, 100% remote, just being a tech bro, you know, just doing things as he likes, making money, making, enjoying himself. Do we want to be like this guy? Is that something you envision for yourself, all right? That you want to smell, but that when you're actually walking, you are smelling and you're not like, oh, nine to five, I, you know, I need to, I need to leave work as, as first as possible. All right, is, is that the case? Is that the case? Do we want to be like this guy? So let's use the chat box, okay? Just send in your responses to the chat box and, um, you know, we'll take it from there. So I'll repeat myself in case if you didn't get the question. Take a look at my screen at the moment. You'd see there's a guy by the right or by the left, maybe my right, your left, you know, what, whatever way it is, okay? And uh, this guy, you'd see that he's smiling, he's, he's excited, walking, all right? Has the headset on like me, has the glasses on like me, has the watch on like me, all right? The only difference is I'm putting on the T-shirt, he's not, okay? Do you want to be like this guy? Do you, is that something you envision for yourself whereby you're walking and you are enjoying your walk? You are enjoying what you do, okay? So Dory says, absolutely. Dory says, absolutely. Temitayo says, yes. Uduak says, sure, of course. I want I want to be like this guy, all right? I want to make the cool Benjamins, okay? I want to I want to walk at my own pace. I want to be excited when I walk. I want to be excited when I spend. And when I say spend, of course, I mean spend money, okay? Caroline says, yes. I think we have yes, yes, yes. Priscilla, yes. Edith, yes. Nancy, yes. You know, everyone wants to be like this guy. No problem. So if you want to be like this guy, right, the first thing you need to do today, all right, is to relax. Take uh, maybe if you, um, depending on the part of the world you're joining in from at the moment, okay? So maybe you might just want to take, a, a, you know, a cup of tea, all right? Maybe a cup of coffee or maybe even a glass of juice, all right? And then just sip, you relax. You listen and then gain knowledge. You begin to learn about the steps that you would take to become this guy. Fantastic. Let's get into it. Okay. So what are we here for? We are here to learn how we can map out processes as a business analyst using draw.io. But there are steps to these things. There are different things we are going to be doing today. We are here for serious business and to our fun, of course. All right. So I'm more to tell towards the fun side than the serious side. But yeah, we are going to have fun and learn. Okay. And like I said, learn how we can become like this guy. The first thing we are going to be doing, of course, is using draw.io to map out processes of a business. We are going to learn how we can actually do something like that, learn some of the requirements that you need to become a business analyst, all for free. You're not paying anything, so you join this, this session for free, and you're going to be learning for free. Again, what do you need? You need to relax. Get your cup of coffee, your cup of tea, or your glass of juice, just relax, you know, take a sip, listen, and be blessed. <laughs> All right. So uh, that's the first thing we're doing. We are what? We are learning how to use draw.io to map out processes of a business. 
And then we are also going to now understand the technical and employability skills that you need to become a business analyst. And of course, we'll take a look at the upcoming course that we have um, and how you can um, you know, be a part of that, how you can leverage all of that. Okay, but what do we do here at Analytics? For those of us that this might be the first time joining in, so you've never heard about Tenalytics, or oh, um, what is Tenalytics even about? Okay, so Tenalytics, we're an edtech firm, educational technology, as you can see. And what we do is that we try to, or we don't just try, we've done this with a lot of success, success I might add. Okay, we take as much persons in the black community as possible into tech, okay? Because we took a look at the tech world and we noticed that, you know, we see the Indians, we see we see the, you know, um, the Asians, but, but when you don't see so much Africans, you don't see so much persons in the black community, all right? And that shouldn't really be the case because when you take a look at all their roles, um, so let's say maybe roles like uh, like the care, so there's nothing wrong with the care, okay? But um, when you take a look at other roles such as, you know, the care, um, you know, like, like the warehousing, then we see a lot of Africans. And then one thing that we wanted to, you know, reverse that trend to get as much persons in the black community into the world of tech as much as possible, you know, so you become that guy, all right? That's smiling, walking, and making money okay so that's what um that's what we do and we offer eight programs we offer programs in data analytics in business analysis data engineering data science financial analytics hr analytics scrum all right cyber security and ai engineering okay so the ai engineering is still coming soon so that's the program that we're looking to implement in the coming months okay so i would say stay tuned and uh um uh, our facilitators that are facilitators that there are people, there are professionals that have worked in the Fortune 500 companies, taking a look at Apple, at uh, Microsoft, you know, all of those big companies. All right. And, uh, but yeah, enough about that. All right. Well, what about me? <laughs> okay. So I'm Aishusa Agbonlafo, as you can see from the name tag. So I, I'm sure you can see from the name tag, my name. All right. And um, I'm a senior data associate and the current program lead in charge of the business analysis program here at Tenalytics. Okay. I have, um, um, I have diverse background in terms of different areas in the tech world, taking a look at data analytics and business analysis at the power platform, and also recently predictive AI engineering. Okay, so I've worked for numerous organizations across Europe and across Africa, helping them to transform their critical business processes. Okay, and I've also trained over 1,500 participants across four continents. All right, but yeah, that's it about me. All right, and um, the facilitator that, you know, that's going to be Dishing all of this knowledge for us today, all right? Telling us how we can actually map out processes using draw.io. It's none other than Tesu, all right? So Tesu Adorora, all right, is an experienced business analyst. And he has, he has worked as a business analyst, a product manager, banker, business analysis coach. He has a, a wealth of experience and is currently a business process analyst at Weimar Bank PLC. All right, so that's that is it today. All right, that's so that's it for me. Uh, Tesu, Tesu, are you on the call? Do you want to, you know, just turn on your video? All right, how are you doing, Tesu? So you're muted. You're muted, Tesu. We can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm doing great. Good evening, <laughs> sister. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, hello, Tesu. All right, guys. So I yeah. would leave you in the hands of Tesu. I'll come back in. Uh, you know. As soon as uh, Tesu is done dishing out the knowledge, all right, and I'll be listening because, of course, I want to be like the guy on the first screen. <laughs> Tesu, please go ahead. All right. Um. So good evening, everyone. So I'll stop um, sharing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, everyone. So good evening and welcome to today's um master class i just i said everything he has done a great job with the introductions and so we're going right into it now um if you're familiar with the term 
process mapping. I want to see you drop a one in the chat. If this is your first time coming across what is called process mapping, please drop a zero. So one for those who have um who have heard of process mapping and have a little idea. Zero if you're hearing it for the first time. So I can see one, you can see zero, zero, zero. Oh wow, the zeros are having it. Okay, I see a one from Nelson. Okay, but now the purpose, the reason why we're here today is to bridge that gap between zero and one, right? So at the end of this masterclass, we want to be sure that everybody has a one. Okay, so uh, process mapping is quite simple um, by definition. So process mapping helps us understand how things work, just like a map. Right. If you're driving from point A to point B, uh, most times you turn on your maybe GPS or your map to help direct you um, on how to go. Right. You get to a junction. You are able to make a decision if to go left or to go right, depending on where you want to go to. All right. Um, on what your ultimate uh, destination is. It's not so different with process mapping, but this time around, we are looking at how things work within an organization. So. A process map would be a visual representation of how um, things, how a process, how an activity is being coordinated. For example, if we say the process of um, ordering food in a canteen, of ordering food on online um, from a um, maybe an Uber Eats or any of these um, um, apps that you can order from, right? You can describe that process, but we need to see it. We need to see exactly how it looks like, you know, from the time you log into the app and how you search for a, a, a restaurant that is close to you and look at their menu and pick something from the menu. Somebody needs to see, you need to visualize what that process looks like. You know, that's where we um, have to draw a map of the process, you know, showing you where you start, where you make decisions and where you end, you know, so typically, uh, we do process mapping because we need to show our users, show our stakeholders how the process will run or how the process runs, you know, so that we're able to even compare, you know, what we have today and what we intend to achieve tomorrow. We can use process mapping also as um, requirements modeling. Um, I know this may be quite, for some persons who are hearing it for the first time, may be quite technical, but yeah, so we we so if we have a project, if we have something to do, we we want to improve our services in the organization. Okay, so how are we doing it today? We're going to draw a map of how things look like, how we do the activities that we do today, and then um, how do we want it to look like? We also draw a map of how we want the activities to look like. I'm trying to be as you know simple as I can so that we understand. You know, so process map would help us compare what is today and what will be tomorrow. So basically, like I've said over and over, the purpose, the main purpose of process mapping is to communicate how a process works in a concise and straightforward way. Okay, so when you look at the map, you would understand, right? If you write um, five pages of um, description on how the, the process works, it may not really make sense to you, like when you look at the map, so you see how the activities happen on the map. So that's what we're going to do here today, right? We're going to look at a process, a, a current process, that's how the process is today and how we want it to be in the future. That is the current process and this current state or the current process and the future state or the um um uh, the, the to be process, right? So we're going to look at that today. But ultimately, I want you to understand that um, process mapping is a technique that we use to give a visual, vis visual representation of what the processes are, the process of the workflows are. So, um, and then we do that because we need to communicate these processes in a concise and straightforward manner. Our stakeholders may not be so used to the jargon that we're using to um, explain what happens at what point, but if you put it in a diagram, at least they know that it moves from point A to point B and they can see it uh, moving. So that's what we're going to do here today. But before we go into drawing or, or mapping out the processes, um, what do we use? So we're going to be looking at these um, 
um, simple process mapping symbols uh, that are used, um, some of the most common process mapping symbols that are used to map processes. So first we'll look at the flow lines, right? The flow lines can also be referred to as the sequence flows. Um, and they are used to connect the symbols, right? They used to indicate um, basically direction of movement and also connect the symbols. So um, if we're moving from point A to point B, um, we use a flow line to show that this um, process from, from this process, we're moving towards the other process, which is the right. We're going to demonstrate all of this so that you see how it works. For example, if we say the, the, at the point where we start doing something, you know, after start, we'd have a flow line that would be pointed towards, you know, the next activity in the process flow. Then the next is a terminal. Now, a terminal is used to indicate the start or the end of a, pro, a, a, a process. So where a process starts, we use a terminal to indicate that. And also where a process ends, we also use a terminal to indicate that end point. The next symbol is an input or an output. So we use that um, symbol to represent where information is entering the system or information is leaving the system. Then the next is processing. Basically, um, we would look, that, look at that as an activity. All right, so that the, the symbol, the rectangle symbol represents an activity within the process flow, right? So um, everywhere we are, there's a task or an activity, we use this um, rectangle to represent that. Then the decision. So remember when we I, I gave that illustration of driving, right? And then you come to a junction where there are two roads and you need to take one um, or the other, depending on what your ultimate destination is. So let's look at this decision symbol as the junction. So, right, it, it, it means that you must have to make a decision at this point so before the process can continue in either ways, right? So it's either you go um, left or right. So the decision has to be made at this point. And when we draw processes, we also have those junctions where you need to make a decision. You can't continue to go straight um, any longer because the road is now broken into two. You have to take one of them. You have to decide which one to take based on uh, what your destination is and where you want to go to. Then the connector. So the connector is used to join different flow lines or different flows. And then the sub function or the sub process symbol is used to um, represent a sub function or a sub process. For example, um, if we're looking at an ordering system, um, maybe an, an ordering system where we order from maybe a Jumia or um, Amazon or Alibaba or any one of these ones, the payment process can be referred to as the sub process because the payment process is most times completed on an independent you know, payment gateway that provides its services to the e-commerce website. All right, so these are the um, some of the, the symbols. There are quite a lot of them, but for the purpose of this masterclass, we'll be using this ones, um, I, I mean, they're uh, popular and commonly used um, in mapping our processes. So we're using these ones to, um, map out of our process today. Now, we're we going to be looking at a scenario. Um, so there is a, we, we, we have a software company, right? Tenalytics Software Company um, is experiencing some challenges and we have been brought in to solve that challenge. What is it? The ticket handling um, process is quite manual, right? By, by that, we mean that Customers are sending their ticket we, uh, through email. I mean, um, those of us who are into process uh, uh, optimi uh, optimization, we see email as manual, although that's some kind of technology that is being used. But we, we see that a manual process because if a human being doesn't go to pick that email, it will remain there. There's nothing prompting that human being to go pick up their email apart from the email notification that came in, right? So we consider emails to be manual, right? So the emails, the ticket handling starts with an email from the customer or maybe a call from the customer, which doesn't really um, 
um, it's not optimized enough because some tickets may be overlooked, may not be handled properly, and then the time that it takes to treat these tickets is not really, um, you know, it, it's it's not really measured. So tickets can um continue to stay indefinitely on a support um, officer's desk and we may not know what is happening, right? So this is the problem that we have. We need to understand what the process is on ground. So today, how are we handling tickets in our company? All right, so we understand how that process is being handled. Then we can move forward to seeing Hello. the solution. How best Hello. do we, yes? Somebody's trying to say something. If somebody wants to say something, please. Um, yes, can I'm you sorry hear about that, Tessu. Because you can go ahead. Oh, okay. All right. Um, thank you very much. Okay, so we need to understand how this process works today and critically look at all the um the, the responsible parties for this whole process, and then we can look at the way forward. So looking at what we currently do today, right? In our current process, we have five steps. The first step is the ticket submission. Now, remember, this is the manual process. So customers will submit their support tickets via an email or a phone call. The support agent would manually create um, ticket in the company's ticketing system uh, based on the information provided by the customer. So the customer will send an email or they'll, send, or they'll call in and then um, the support agent who re receives that call, receives the email, would proceed to log the ticket. Now, this is not resolution yet. Those tickets are logged on our ticket system and then um, waiting for someone else to go pick them up. Now, the next task is this that the, the ticket assignment. The support manager will now log into our ticketing system and then that's when they are able to assign those tickets to support agents. Remember, is it support agents that logged these tickets in the first place, right? So they'll log the ticket and wait for this ticket to be assigned to them, right? The support manager would now assign these tickets to the available agents, you know, based on what they have, the workload they have on their queue at that moment, or the um, urgency of the ticket. Then they would proceed, this, this assignment decision would be made through email or in person. So at a, the manager will either have to walk to this person's desk and say, okay, you can check now. I assign tickets one, two, three to you. Or send them an email to say, uh, please note that ticket one, two, three is assigned to you. And then this is also subject to when this agent is able to look up their email and check what is there, right? I'm building this foundation so that we understand, you know, what currently happens when we even draw our process, right? So the next is ticket resolution. They tick the... Agent, the support agent now who has been assigned this ticket would manually review and prioritize the assigned ticket. So um, depending on the complexity or the urgency of the ticket assigned to them, they would prioritize them, you know, so that they are able to start a resolution. Then the agent will communicate um, with customers via email or phone calls to gather additional information or update ticket status. Right, uh, provide um, update on ticket status. So um, they would have to call the customer, you know, or send an email to say, okay, we need more information or your ticket is being handled and all of that. They would have to do that via email. Then the next is escalation handling. If um, the support agent is not able to um, resolve whatever the customer has complained about, Right, they would have to escalate that to a higher level support team or managers who would um, resolve these issues. How would they do that? They would have to um, send, sorry, send, um, that's, um, sorry, they would have to send an email or go to them physically to go and say okay um we need to we need you we need your help we need your support you know with this particular ticket and then um 
we have not been able to resolve it you know so um the time frame is not definite even in this case because they can decide to keep that ticket for as long as they want before they proceed to escalate that to this the um high level support team then the final is the support uh, the the ticket closure the support agent would update the ticket statuses and that will be done on our you know ticketing system they will go once they have resolved the issue they they will go back to the ticketing system to close that um support ticket and then customers would also be called or an email will be sent to customer to inform them that um their tickets have been closed now the pain point with this current process is everything is human triggered if a human being doesn't go back to say, okay, we need to um, update the customer on what is happening or we need to escalate and all of that, there is simply no automation in place to help us manage this process. And by extension, we are going to have a lot of customers that are not satisfied because um, imagine somebody uh, initiating or submitting a request, you know, a complaint, you'd know that they're already sort of pained or maybe they have a a problem already with our system or our software so we'd need to work swiftly to resolve their issues right so that's that's the basis from where we are coming from there there are problems with this process flow so we need some kind of automation that would help us solve this problem do we understand what the current process is and understand what the pain points are uh, um, if you understand, let me see you drop a one in the chat. A one in the chat, if you understand what the current uh, process is and what the pain points are, you know, before we go ahead and um, map, draw them out, draw it out, I mean. Okay. All right, so we are following. That's good. So before we go to the um the um, future state, let's map this out. Let's see how um let's see how to represent these on a map. All right, so I would like to ask a question. From what we have seen so far, um, who are the responsible parties? Who are the persons that that are responsible for, um, um, sorry, who are the participants of this um, process map? It's one thing that we need to know also that there would be um, responsible actors for our process maps, right? So in this one that we just showed, okay, customers, Susan said customers, yes. Um, who, are, who else is a participant in this um, um process flow that's very correct susan um customers agents by agents you mean support agents yes that's correct Okay, stakeholders. Stakeholders is quite broad. So would you want to break it down to what kind of stakeholders we're talking about? Um, service manager, yes, that's correct. Okay, so I'll be bringing on my screen shortly where we'll go to draw.io to um, map out these processes. All right, so um, that's coming up shortly. So if you are on your computer, you can you may want to do the same as we're doing it. So um, you go to okay. Let me let me bring up my screen so that I can, I'll show us how we we'll do that together. All right. So from your browser, just type uh, draw.io, draw.io, and then you enter. So it opens the draw.io uh, page. Okay, so um, once you open draw.io, you're going to be asked if you want to, um,
if you want to open so for for first time users you ask you what where you want to save your work maybe to your device or to your um cloud storage or all of that but um I already selected device, so you can select your preferred storage. I already selected device that way. That's why I have device here. So I'll, I'll proceed to create a new diagram. All right, so I'll call these um, complaints or let's say ticket handling. All right, ticket handling. Now, because of the nature of the process we are looking at, you know, we identified several stakeholders, customers, um, support agents, support manager, you know, and then the um, the higher level support team. All right, so those are the stakeholders. So for that, we are going to be using a swim lane diagram. So a swim lane diagram helps us um, show the different um actors that are involved in a particular process right so we're going to map in the process based on each um level of participation so we use a swim lane diagram and then we click on create all right so uh, since i'm saving to my device to ask me to save um again so i'll just proceed to save all right so after saving that it comes with a template it opens with a template um, if you are following, if you are with us, you can drop a one. If you need us to wait for you, please drop a zero so we can wait a few seconds for you to catch up to where we are. If you are following, if you're here with us, you are your system, your computer, um, can drop a one. Okay, Sharif is here with us. One. Okay, I see several ones. Um, Susan, GMK. Okay. Lowy wants us to wait. So um wait a few seconds for Lowy to join in. Okay. Um, hope is almost. Hope is lost. Okay, so what we did was to go to draw.io, draw.io in your browser. Yinka is lost too, apologies. So go to draw.io in your browser. Um, and then it will ask you to, to choose a device if you're there, to ask you to choose a device or your storage um, location. You can choose your device, you can choose the cloud storage. So once you're done with that, you um it will ask you for a file name. You, you click on open new, uh, create a new diagram to ask you for a file name. So you put the file name there. We're using um um tickets. We're using ticket handling. So once you do that, once you say ticket handling, it will also um ask you for the template you want to use. Just go ahead and select a swim lane diagram. And once you click on create, you would um, ask you to save again, then you'd be here where we are. All right. So now that we are here, we'll proceed to, uh, you know, these symbols that are here, we don't need them for now. We want to create ours. So just click on any one of them and press delete on your keyboard to delete them. So click on them and delete. Make sure you're clicking on the border lines. So that it selects the object itself and not the whole of the um the lanes, the swim lanes that we have. So once you're done deleting, it should be as clean as this. Now, um, we identified customer one, um, the support agent two, the support manager three, the high level um support team. Four. So there are four teams, there are four persons, the actors that are involved in this process, but we have three swim lanes. To have the fourth one, you can click on any one of the lanes. I'll click on lane three, and then I'll do control and D on my keyboard to duplicate that last lane so that I now have four to represent the four actors in the process. All right, so I'll now proceed to... Um, extend these these lanes because i know that what we are going to do is going to take up all the space so lane lane four which is named lane three is highlighted i'll click on this point here that's the middle point um at the far right i'll click and drag it all the way to the right so that it expands that lane and once i stop uh, dragging the all the other lanes are going to follow suit and do the same Okay, so 
Let's start. Are we all following? Um, maybe you can drop a zero if we need to wait for you so that, uh, because we're going to start now, we'll move. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Susan, thank you for that. Okay. Susan said zero. Okay. So Susan just, um, you can speed up. Okay. Hope you have three lanes. Click on any one of the lanes, right? Where you have lane three, click on lane three, where you have lane three and control D. Right, yes, yeah, Susan, control D. Control D would duplicate the last one so that you have four lanes. All right. If you have three lanes, yeah, Susan is here with us now. Okay, so if you have three lanes, click on one of the lanes and um control D. Um hope you want to drag downwards. We haven't done that here yet. We dragged to the right. Right, we drag to the right. So you click on one of the lanes and then at the middle point at the far right, drag to the right to expand the space that we have. That's what we did. Um, you don't have to drag downwards, it's to the right. Okay, let's start. Um, we are pressed for time, so let's start. Now, where we have lane one. Okay, double click on lane one, where you have the write-up for lane one, and that is going to be renamed customer. All right, so that's our customer now. The next is support agent. Support agent. The next is support manager. Then last but not the least is the high level support team. So remember what I did was to double click and change the name. So you double click on the right up, it would um, get highlighted, you now change the name. So where we have pool now, we are going to write the name of the process. So we're going to say current states. Um, I like to put a hyphen in between and the name of the process is ticket handling. Okay, are we together? We should be. All right, so let's start. Now, um, to indicate where the process starts, um, remember I, I told us about the um, terminal shape that indicates where the process starts. We can also use an ellipse um, shape. So since we have an ellipse available here, we're going to use an ellipse shape to indicate start, right? Apart from the ellipse shape, we can also use a circle to indi um, indicate our starting position. But um, so let's 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 use a circle. So this circle is quite big. I want to make it small. To do that on, on Windows, I'll hold down the shift key and reduce it from one of the corners. All right. Then I make sure it's in the middle of the customer lane. I double click in the circle and I type start. All right, so that indicates it's start. Now I want to draw a flow line. After starting, I want to draw a flow line. I really want us to follow along, right? So I'll check the chat again. If you're not following, maybe you tell us um, in the chat exactly what's wrong so that we'll go. If, we're, if we succeed in mapping just the um, current states and everybody understands, I think we have done a great job, you know, so that we don't rush. Um, um, up. Okay. Um, Hope is saying you're having diagram on yours. You'd have to delete those ones inside. Click on every one of them and delete them, you know, so that you're able to start. All right. So if you're at this point, you have, if you have created your start, let me see you drop a one. Drop a one if you're at exactly where I am now, so we can proceed. Okay. Suzanne, thank you. Lowy, thank you. 
Ah, JMK is 11. That's double one. Okay, I see you. All right, guys. So um, let's proceed. Now, hover on the, I, the, the, the symbol that you have created. Okay, you see arrows in four directions. We are taking the arrow to the right. Okay, so once you hover on it, also hover on the arrow to the right. We are not clicking now, all right? We hover on the arrow to the right, and then we also point to the shapes that appeared in front of the arrow and click on the rectangle. So we want to um, create an activity now, right? So we click on the rectangle. So you now have a rectangle and a flow line pointing towards the rectangle. Let me undo and do that again. I hover on the start, point to the um, arrow to the right, also point to where the diagrams, the, the symbols appear and click on the um, rectangle there. So what we are now going to do is to double click. Um, so here is where customer, Customer submits tickets. No, customer calls or sends an email. So this is where customer calls or sends an email. You know, about their complaints, right? So once they do that, um, we the next is the support agent. Remember that. Once customer calls and sends their email um, about their complaints in or their request, um, we are going to, the, the support agent is going to be on the receiving end, right? So the next is the same thing we did, right? Hover on the activity that we just created and then um, the arrow facing down towards the support agent. Hover on it again, you'd see and um, shapes that would come up, you, we, we need another activity, another task. So we are going to click on this task. However, this time around, we need to align it um, because this is in the support agent uh, lane. All right, so what we do is to um, take it up a little. You can see that blue line in the middle is indicating that that is the midpoint of that lane. Okay, so I, I would want to, uh, take it back um, a little and align it. Now we have this um, flow line that it is on top of the lane demarcator here. So I just want to drag it down a little. I've clicked on the line. I'll point to the middle of the line and then I bring it down a little so that we can see how our process is flowing. All right, so after that is done, the next thing the support... Um, agent does is to log, um, create a ticket, creates a ticket, and then again, um, uh, process maps are drawn in present tense. Okay, um, let me also mention that uh, they're drawn in present tense so that at every point in time, somebody looks at it, um, they feel like the process is happening as we go. So it's present continuous, right? So create a ticket, um, on the ticketing system. So once they once they create this ticket on the ticketing system, um, based on what we saw. Now the the ticket the the manager the support manager is going to look at those tickets and assign them to a support agent. So we're going next to the senior, the, the support manager. Now we, again, the same thing we did before, hover on this rectangle, point to the, the um, arrow that's pointing towards the support manager and then click on the next task. You know, you, you would also want to adjust it so that it's in the middle of that lane and it, it sort of just looks organized. Then the support manager is now going to um manually assigns manually assigns tickets to support officers
All right. So once um this is done, he, he assigns that based on the urgency and all of that that we that we we saw. Okay. This ticket will go back to support officers, right? So um we're going to hover on this task, uh, point to the arrow, create another task. But this time around, this task is going towards the. So I just clicked and dragged. It's going towards the um, support agent now. So we're back to the support agent. We can look at, see the back and forth that is happening with this process. So back to the support agent. Make sure it's in the middle. And then what do they do? They are going to prioritize the ticket based on the. Um, the, the the urgency or um complexity all right so let's let's bring that in to our diagram um what's happening sorry about that um let me do that again let me take that process again Think I have some kind of formatting in place. Okay, create my task and move it up to support manager. So he uh, manually manually as um prioritizes tickets. I mean. Oh, how do I spell for it? Priority, prioritizes. Ah, okay. Tickets. You know, based on urgency or complexity, right? So now, um, we we'll have a decision box here. So he has looked at the tickets and all of that. Prioritize them. Um, if he requires more information. So remember, I talked about this decision box to be your junction, right? So at this junction, you have to make it take either um, one direction or the other. So if it requires more info, right? That's the question. Requires more info. Um, would hover here. So there are two decisions we need to take, right? Um, we hover point to customer. That will be a task for customer, right? Um, if this is a yes. And now to, to indicate that, we'll click on the line, click on, on, on the flow line and type a yes on it. So it means we require more information. Then we'll, this will be contact, um, contact customer, or let, let's just go, just go to provide, provide more information. via email or calls, all right? So, but if, if he doesn't require any information, um, we'll would also create another task and this would be a no. So he doesn't require additional information. Um, review, review tickets for resolution. All right, he reviews the ticket for resolution. Now, um, once um, the customer provides more information, it comes back to this point where he reviews for um, resolution. So what we are going to do now, we are going to click on this arrow, right? Because we're not creating a new symbol. Click on the arrow, drag it, and make sure it drops on top in the center of this box, and we leave it there. So from where the customer provides more information, it comes back to the support agent, where he review he reviews the ticket and then um, for reviews ticket for resolution. All right, so after that happens, we're going to make another decision here. 
is this ticket, um, are we able to resolve this ticket within the timelines, right? So let's make another decision. So um, would uh, point to, hover on, on, on this task, point to the arrow and click on, it. sorry, not a task now, we're going to do a decision um, symbol. So click on the decision symbol, which is the last one. I'm sure we are all following. Please, um, I really, really want us to, to follow. Okay, so Kemin is asking, how do you know how to formulate these rights up you are imputing in the diagrams? Okay, Kemini, what we did was, you know, I took us through, I walked us through what the process is, right? So um, it is based on what the process is that we are drawing this map. All right, so this is what currently happens. We know what currently happens. And that is why um, I, I tell students, even my colleagues, that before you start drawing, write it down, know exactly what happens in this process before you start drawing. So it doesn't look like magic, um, when we are drawing, all right? So, yes, um, th that's where we got it from, you know? And then somebody's asking if the class is recorded, of course it's 100% recorded and you'd be able to um, watch this again, um, you know, to follow what we are doing. All right, so here we need to make a, a um, decision. So um, resolved within timeline or can be resolved within timeline. Or let's let's just leave it at resolved um, because um, that that would be making can be resolved. If it's a yes, they proceed to resolve. If it's a no, this is where we go to the support team, the high level support team. So let's start with the no. Um, would point hover on this decision um, symbol point to the arrow and click on our task. This task is for the high level support team. So we'd move it to the high level support team down here. All right. So this um, on this arrow, we double click and we're going to type a no. So it means that the support team cannot resolve this at this point. All right. So let's, let's leave it there um, for now and proceed to and proceed to, uh, you know, where the support team can resolve it, right? So we hover here as usual, point to this arrow and click on the task. All right, so once we create that task, um, here is where they proceed to resolve um, the Ticket resolves tickets and manually updates ticket status. All right, so once they do that, once they create that, um, once they resolve this um, ticket and then update the ticket status on the um, ticketing uh, system, they'll proceed to send um, an email or call customer um, on to inform them of their resolution status. You know, okay, so email or call customer Email or call customer to, okay, to provide updates. Email or call customer to provide updates. So emails or calls customer to provide updates, right? Then, right after that, would um, hover again, create another task where 
Um, customer confirms. Customer confirms resolution. Right? As soon as customer confirms resolution, that ends our process, right? So we'll just um, end the process there. Okay. So that's an end. So that's, that's one way to the end of the process. All right. So now, if we require some sort of high-level support, which is no, um, this is a yes, sorry, let me put the yes there. If, if they cannot, if the support team cannot resolve it and we require some high level support. So this comes to the high level support. Remember this last lane is for high level support. Now, high level support will proceed to review the ticket for resolution, right? If you use the ticket for resolution, then they'll, they'll proceed to resolve the ticket. So same thing that we have here. Um, they'll resolve the ticket and um, manually update the ticket status on you know, our ticketing system. Once that is done, the next thing is to inform customer via email. And then, you know, so it moves back to the same, um, it joins this process here, right? So how did I do that? I hovered on this um, task here, pointed to the arrow, clicked on the arrow and dragged it all the way here. So we have our process from start to finish. Um, I know that quite some persons were not following. Um, how do I show this whole screen? Um, okay, at 50% it's going to be too small, but this is the result of the process that we've just mapped. So that long explanation that we had at some point, here is it on our screen, you know, to show us how the process starts and all the steps that are involved until the end of the process. All right, do we have any questions? Um, okay, yeah, I've, um, I think it's jamming or so, I've, re I've added that. Um, yeah, I've added a yes there. So yes, um, this is what we were talking about. So the yes is there to indicate that. I, did I see a new message? Um, yeah, okay, yes, of course, I can increase the size, but I was I wanted us to see the whole um flowchart. So um which part of the flowchart do you want to see? I'm guessing it's towards this end part. So now to add some colors to this, let's um for the end, once you click on the end, the um editing tools will come out. So on fill, you click on where you have auto and there's a white. And let's use red to indicate the end of the process. We can do the same thing at the start um, to use green to indicate that. So the same thing comes to auto, click on the white color, um, select green and apply. And that indicates the start of the process. Um, do we have any other, any other questions that we need to look at? Uh, don't worry, uh, PJ. Don't worry, you didn't. Um, it's your first try, right? I know you think you ruined it, but you are going to get the hang of it. Uh, pretty much soon. Uh, all of us um didn't get it right the first time we tried, but you know, with practice, you're going to get more. Um, and you'll be able to do better. Okay, or you can even try it again. The second time you get it right. Um, hey, Kemini, um, so I'd advise that you leave it simple. 
right? You leave them simple. The only other um, symbol that I um, advise that you make a color of is the decision box where you can put a yellow. Um, um, so is the color a choice decision or there are specific colors for a task? I didn't put colors to a task. I prefer you leave the colors in black and white, right? For task. But for the start is green, for end is red. Those are standard. And then for decision boxes, you can decide to use a light yellow, just like I've used right now, right? You can decide to use a light yellow to indicate decisions, right? But starting off, I tell people starting off, to keep it simple and leave it all in black and white. You can indicate start with green and end with red, but every other thing, leave it simple, you know, so that you don't complicate things. Um, those colors sometimes can be confusing if you don't have the right choices of colors to add to your process flow diagram, right? But yes, you can use um, the light yellow to indicate your places where you have um, decisions to make. All right. Um, I think I, I so, so I think you can take it from here. Um, so that I think there are no questions. I would have loved to go over the to be uh, the 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 future states, but that will take us some more time, so we don't um make this longer. But what do you think, Isosa? Um. Uh, yeah. So uh, the for the future states is this something that you know you can just run through in uh, fifteen minutes. So of course. The session is fully recorded. Okay, so they are going to get the recording and uh, they'll be able to practice on their own. All right, so if it's something we can just run through in fifteen minutes, I think that would uh, that would be great. Um, fifteen minutes. Okay, we'll try. Yeah. All right. So oh. the feature state is quite simple. Um, one second, let me bring that up. Um, so we'll look at what the feature state is, then we'll come back and um, try to map that um process just like we did with the first. All right, so sharing my screen. All right, so this is the future state. We are looking to automate the ticket submission, right? Um, so this time around, we are going to remove um, basically every other human being apart from the customer. All right, so um, we are going to start from the ticket submission. So customers would submit their um, tickets through an online portal or a chatbot integrated with the company ticketing system. All right, so once they do that, the tickets will be automatically generated in the system and then all the relevant details from the customers would be uh, required, you know, so that there'll be no need for manual entry. So as the customer is making their complaint, we're asking them all the questions that we need to ask. We don't have to go back to them after that complaint is made. Then the next thing is AI-based ticket assignment. Now we're going to create an algorithm that will analyze the content of the ticket, customer history, and then the availability of the agents that we have to assign these tickets. Sometimes we'll use something like a round robin. You know, round robin would say um, assign the task equally, right? So if agent A has four tickets, agent B has three tickets, I would have to add that ticket to agent B, you know, so they have four each. And anyone who has less, you know, will get the next um, um, ticket at the time, right? So we're going to use. Um, an automated process to assign this ticket, replacing what the senior manager used to do. So the ticket resolution is also the same thing, right? We are going to also use chatbots or robots that would help us handle um, ticket resolution, right? If there are common issues that are, are known, you know, uh, maybe that their, their software would not come up, you know, we can go ahead to suggest um, possible uh, solutions to the customers to say, hey, have you tried A, B, C, and D? Um, you can do this, you know. So 
if they are not able to resolve those issues after that, then um, we are, they, are, they are going to escalate. The chatbot will escalate using also an algorithm to a, a support team that is going to handle that um, handle that uh, the resolution of that issue. So after that, automated resolutions will be sent. Right. Once once it is uh, once it's escalated, automated resolutions will be sent to the the teams or the the individuals or group that would handle this, and also reminders, frequent reminders will be sent to them to make sure that they close out that ticket within the um, allotted time. And then also automatic uh, automated ticket closure. Once these tickets are um, closed, these issues are resolved. The tickets will be updated on our ticketing system, and we also send automated notifications to the customers to inform them that we have completed this um, um, ticket that they, they logged, and then also tell them that they have um, their issue has been resolved, and ask them for their feedback. So this is this is basically what the process is going to look like. Okay, from start to finish for this. We are not necessarily going to use a um, what's it called a swim lane diagram. We are going to be using what we call a simple process flow. All right. So um, we have learned two types of flow charts today. One is a swim lane. The second is a simple flow chart. So we're going to look at how the simple flow chart is going to come in here and you know um, describe what this process is going to look like. Are we together? We are together. Let's see one in the chat. Um, we are going to we are going to do the future state now. So if you were behind on the current state, I think that was more complex. This is going to be more simpler, right? Let's 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 do it together this time around. So I'll stop sharing the screen now, um, so I can share my uh, browser for us to look at the future state flow together. Okay, so we're here. On this same um, file, I'm going to create a page two. So if you look at the bottom of the page, you would see a plus sign, right? Um, you see page one, so you may want to rename the page one. Double, just double click on page one, we'll say current states. Current states. I rename that. So I'm adding page two now, and I'll rename this page two to say future states, you know, so that I'm able to um, know what I have on each page. So now this is the future state. Remember, I said we're going to use a um, simple process flow, right? So we start. We don't have all those swim lanes and all of those here. We'll start. All right. Are we on the same page? Drop a one if we're on the same page. Um, okay. One if we're on the same page, if you have your stats now. Okay, now seeing um, a team. Bosayo, okay, I see you all. All right, so. Well, there, Susan is zero. Susan, please hope is there. Just um, add a new page, and that will be your JMK is here. Add a new page, and that will be your future state, and then proceed to um, add a circle and type start inside. So that's the beginning of the process. At the bottom of the page, you see page one. Then you can you see a plus sign. Click on the plus. You have a new page. You add a new page. That's Susan to Susan. All right. So um, I think we're there now. So let's move ahead. As usual, hover on this um, start symbol. Point to the arrow to the right. And then we click on the next um, task, right? So the task here is customer.
sends a request via web portal or chatbot. web portal or chat, right? So after that, the next thing that happens is the system the system creates a ticket on the ticketing system. Or let's call it the ticketing portal. Right? So the next thing that happens is the assignment of the tickets. Now, so um, AI algorithm Auto assigns tickets to support agents. Now, remember that although these tickets are um, assigned to support agents, they our bot, our chat bot, is going to first of all try to resolve that issue first and how is that going to be done you remember when we read it we said that the um our ai driven chatbot is going to suggest solutions to the customer um first and also suggest solutions to the agent right so first our ai um ai powered um, chatbots Suggest possible solution to customers and agents. All right. So after this, after this is done, okay, that's quite big. Let's adjust this. All right. So once that is done, um, we are going to make a decision here. So once these possible solutions are made and if the um, issue is resolved, you know, we, we can continue and go ahead. If the issue is not resolved, we need to escalate, right? So we're going to make a decision here. Um, call this issue resolved. All right, so we're going to have a yes and a no. If this is a yes, right? Um, if this is a yes, um, send system sends automated um, notifications to customer on resolution. All right, so once that is done, remember we also request for feedback from customer. So um, customer provides feedback. And then this is where the process would end, right? On this side, this is, if we take that route, if it was resolved, this is where the process 
ends, right? Now, let's go back. So if this was a no, if this was a no, if the issue was not resolved, right? So um, the our AI powered system would escalate. Escalates to a higher support team. All right. And then um, okay, before this, I think there's a decision before this. So um let, let's do that. Now um the next there's another decision point. So is the issue resolved? If the answer is no. We also check if um timeline has been breached. Okay. If timelines have been breached, this would be a yes. All right, we escalate to higher support team. If the um, if timelines have not been breached, we'll do nothing, right? Um, we just need to check that if timelines have not been breached, we we'll do uh nothing here, right? So we just keep checking if the timelines have been breached. If um. If timeline is not breached, uh, we do nothing and just um, check that it's there. But if the issue is resolved, you know, if issue is resolved, we move on. If issue is not resolved, you know, it's a system thing. The system comes back to check at intervals to know what um, status is there. And then um, this also, um, you know, do nothing and it ends here. So he has to, we go back to this process. No. Let's 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 uh, represent it in a better way, okay? So we can um, actually reroute it back to this to check where if the issue is resolved. So let's do this instead. All right. So let's create a loop here um, that shows this. Okay. So let's do this instead. So if timeline is not breached, um, we we'll check if the issue has been resolved all over again until we have a um a yes which takes us out of that loop so if timeline is not breached and the issue is not resolved we keep going to this so if we have a yes at any point in time it goes this way if the issue is resolved we go this way if timeline is breached and the issue is not resolved we go this um way instead all right so that's what happens there now once this issue is escalated to this the um, hired support team, um, they'll be notified. So automated notified notifications will be sent. System sends automated notifications to the support team. Then they would uh, review and resolve the complaint or re review and resolve the ticket. <laughs> Review and resolve the ticket, sorry.
re reviews and resolve the ticket. Then we can choose two ways to do this, right? We can, so after this ticket is resolved, the next thing that happens is, you know, where customer uh, system sends automated notifications to customer. And then we have a customer provides feedback and we have the process end here, right? We can choose that one route to go about it or re repeat the tasks, right? But, um, I prefer we do it this way. Okay, so once this um, is resolved, we now have the um, system sending automated notifications to the customer. Customer provides feedback and we end here. So just like we did previously, we indicate this end with a red. Um, this decision boxes, we put a light yellow there. Um, and then at the start, we... Uh, make it green to indicate the start of the process. So this is our process map for the to be process. Who is here with us? Who is here with us? Um, Ed team, Susan. Are we on the same page? A team, great, Susan, great, that's perfect. So that's 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 it, that's the representation. Now it's quite simpler, you know. We've broken it down from where it was, where we had you know um plenty actions to do and all of that to where we just have a simple flow that shows us what is done. You know, most of the actions being carried out by our um automated platform, you know, our investment in chatbots and our AI al algorithm to help us you know, um, tackle this um, system issue. Okay, so any questions before I hand over to Isosa? Mm -hmm. Questions, please? Okay, um, in the absence of any questions, um, Isosa, please over to you now. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Tessu. That was a fantastic, uh, fantastic one. All right. So Tessu just showed us how we could actually, you know, map out the process of an organization and make things a whole lot better. All right. In terms of, uh, you know, removing the bottleneck. So things were a lot manual. Oh, customers had to send an email. Customers had to do this, had to do that. But now we brought in a machine to do most of the work. Okay. To Make things a whole lot easier. So what Tesla has just shown us is, is a it's one of the requirements that you need to become a business analyst. All right. Now I know that some of us might not have been able to follow in terms of you know practicing alongside, but don't worry. The recording is available to each and every one of us as long as you ensure that you fill in the attendance form and that you still to the end of the session. Okay, so you get access to the recording and then you can practice this practice this on your own. Take a look at things, try it out on your own, and you know be on your way to become a business analyst. Now, before we go ahead, before we move on. I would like to, you know, at the start of the session, we agreed that we would like to be like that, um, you know, there's the that guy that we saw that had the, you know, he had the watch on, the headset on, you know, the glasses on, um, walking remotely, smiling while walking, making cool cash, just happy with life, okay? We all agreed we would want to be like that kind of person that would like to have that kind of work-life balance, just like someone mentioned. But do we wonder, is it easy? It's one thing for you to say that, oh, do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? I could go ahead and ask you, do you want to be an astronaut? And you say, yes, maybe, <laughs> okay? But you might wonder, is it really easy to be an astronaut? Is that the case? Do we wonder, do we wonder, oh, is it easy to transition into tech? Is it easy to become a business analyst? Is it easy to make the cool cash? Is it easy to have that work-life balance? Is it easy for you to actually work and enjoy what you do? Do we wonder, do we think about that? So just send a yes to the chat box. If you do think about that or a no, if you don't think about it, okay? That's if it's easy to actually make that kind of transition. 
All right. So come on, guys. I, like I said, interaction, interaction, interaction. That's what we are. That's that's the entire team for today. All right. So do we think about that? Do we think about if it is actually easy? Do we think it's easy to make that transition? All right. So come on, guys. I need response. So uh, I, can, I can see your question. All right. So don't worry. Your question will be taken at the end of the session. OK, so uh, Edit says, yes, once I have the required skills, it is easy. So Edit thinks it's easy. All right. So what about the, the rest of us? Do we think it's easy? Do we wonder? Oh, or maybe you want to say, oh, I so sir. sometimes I think about it and I'm that true. I don't know if it's easy or do you actually think it's easy? Just like the way uh, Edit, uh, just like what Edit mentioned. So guys, come on. I need responses. I need responses. I need response. So Susan says, for now, no, because it's the building stage. Okay. So for now, it's not easy because it's a building stage. And uh, Iberi says, nothing is easy, but where there is a way, there is a way. Iberi is being a little philosophical. Philosophical, yeah, now okay. So, where there is a way, there is a way, okay. Uh, Busala says, with the right amount of dedication, Ben says, nothing done to earn a living is easy, okay. If you want to make the cool cash, then the vote to do that, uh, probably not easy, okay. So, that's what Ben is saying. And uh, PJ Lanzo says, it's not easy, but with determination, it is doable. And Ganiyat says, it's easy if you are ready. Fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Is it easy? All right. Let's see. Let's see if it's easy. <laughs> okay. Just a moment. So we'd know if it's easy in due time. Oops. Okay. All right. So according to the World Economic Forum, it's easy. Okay, according to the World Economic Forum, it's easy for you to make that transition. And why? Why is it easy for you to make that transition? Because the World Economic Forum has taken a look at a list of jobs that's, that are going to increase, you know, with time. In Recently, we've been hearing, um, you know, things about AI, 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 AI this, AI that, AI everywhere. Like, literally, AI everywhere. And some persons are scared. Oh, am I going to take my job in the future? Maybe in the coming months, someone is going to tell me, oh, uh, we no longer need you. We are bringing in the machine to replace you. You know, we have those fears, okay? The, the World Economic Forum is coming in here to tell you that AI is not taking these jobs, all right? In the coming years, there's only going to be an increase, a rise in the amount of jobs available, all right? And some of those jobs, we have the business, Business, all right, the business intelligence analyst. So business analysis is a career path that we know for a fact is going to increase in the coming years. It's hot cake right now. It's only going to be more hot cake in quotes in the coming years because I really don't think AI can, you know, anyways, we get, we get into that. We get into that, okay? But what am I saying? The World Economic Forum just told us that it's, it's easy because there are going to be a lot of jobs available for business analysts in the coming years. And of course, we have other jobs, um, you know, other jobs here. So when you have the, this is a very, very fantastic uh, and insightful report. So when you have, when you have the access to the slides, when you begin with the slides, you can just come over here, click on this and you'll see the full, you'll see the full report. Okay. And you really know that, oh yeah, it's easy. But it's one thing to say it's easy. It's another thing to actually make it easy. Because the fact I said that more jobs are going to be available in the coming years, that doesn't mean that if you go to bed and you wake up, you will get the job. All right. Just like uh, just like Ben said, nothing done to earn a living is easy. So there are things you have to put in place to make it easy for you. We get into that. But the first thing first, we are still we are still on the um, is it easy premise? That's what we're still on. And for some of our participants, all right, some of our participants in the business analysis program, they've attested to the fact that it's easy. Okay. They've attested to the fact that they have been able to get jobs as business analysts. And we take a look at, our, you know, few success stories. Over here, we have Abigail. Now, Abigail 
was in Canada, or she's still in Canada, actually, okay? Abigail worked as a care worker in Canada, and two months after joining the business analysis program, Abigail got employed as a business analyst for the government of Alberta in Canada. Okay? This is this for Ab this for Abigail. All right. Now, once you get the slide, you can click on this to listen to you know Abigail's story. It is easy. Just two months, two months, not five years, not six years, not oh, I learned uh, business analysis ten years ago. No, you like, I I don't think it gets better than that now, does it? I don't think so. All right. And also we have Moji Sola. So Moji Sola joined us. And this is Mojisola sending a message to us, to Adeza, all right? And saying that, oh, I actually finally got an offer as a business analyst, all right? Mojisola currently works as a business analyst in the UK. And we also have Olamide, all right? So Olamide is also registered for the business analysis program and got to work as a business analyst, as a business data analyst in the UK, working in the energy sector. Just a few success stories, all right? We also have some others, all right? We have Temi, who, from, who was able to transition from a lawyer to a business analyst. And we also have, uh, we also have, uh, uh, um, sorry? So we also have this other participants, all right, that was able to land the job as a business analyst. So this is, uh, this is Shola, okay? So sorry, the name is currently not, um, not in here, all right? So all of those participants, as soon as you, oh, sorry, Ramat, okay? So as soon as you get the recording, you can just, as soon as you get the slides, you can just go ahead and click on the link, listen to the amazing things that these people had to say about how easy it was for them to transition from a business, from um, the classroom to their first job as a business analyst. Very, very easy. Only if you put in the work. All right. Now, one other thing you might be wondering, you might be thinking, oh, I so sir, but I don't have any knowledge. I don't have any experience in business analysis. Are you just saying now that like, like, uh, are you just saying now that like Abigail, I just joined the program and I'm going to get a job. All right. After completing the program, that I don't need some sort of background experience. No, we'll get into that. But no, why did I say no? Take a look at this again. This is Temi. Temi was what? A lawyer, not a business analyst. Not that old Temi, um, you know, started business analysis in school. That Temi worked as a business analyst for, uh, you know, for five years and then, you know, was looking to upskill and then, you know, no. All right, Temi was a lawyer. One fantastic thing about the tech industry is that it doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter what is, you know, what you started in school. Adesa studied industrial chemistry, all right? I studied agriculture. All right, and yeah, I am today in tech. Okay, a big shot in tech. <laughs> okay, but what am I trying to say? In case if you're wondering, all right, oh, if I don't have experience, is it going to affect me transitioning? If I didn't study this in school, or if I'm a medical doctor and I'm looking to move into tech, is it possible? Or if I'm a banker and I'm looking to get into tech, is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Okay, but yeah, business analysis. We what we've just you know went through is is it easy? And we've established the fact that it's actually easy. Do we think it's easy? From what I've said, do we think it's easy, or do you think I society is just here spitting fables? All right, do we think that's the case, or do we think it's easy? Okay, so come on, guys, I need you to send it to the chat, you know, to the chat box. From what I've mentioned, all right. You have the skills, you have the training, you are with us, yeah, it's analytics. Do you think it's easy from, you know, the success stories I've just shown you guys? Remember, Abigail got a job as a business analyst two months just after completing the program and worked as a care worker previously before making that full transition. Do we think that's the case, guys? So like I said, interaction. So let's keep the, let's keep the chat box running, okay? So what do we think? What do we think? With the right amount of work, do we think we can get it done from everything I've said so far. So come on, guys. Responses, responses, responses. Okay, so let's send our response using the chat box. What do we think? What do we think? Or do you think like, oh, I just, uh, what you're just saying is, uh, you know, you're just, you're just, like I said, spitting fables. And when I say fables, I'm talking about fairy tales. All right, that uh, yeah, this just fell to you know, uh, tales by moonlight. Okay, <laughs> and it's not something that 
it's uh you know that we can say oh this is actually reality all right so Eberi says yes it's achievable fantastic Eberi is taking the, into you know it's taking note of the testimony of this testimony that have been given by others Susan is doing the same Susan says yes it can be done what about the rest of us what do we think what do we think so come on guys like I said responses 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 interaction is going to be very very key for us okay so what do we think guys what do we think i've gotten a response from a very i've gotten a response from susan so what about the rest of us what do we think so if you think it's not as well you can also say you, you don't think it's it's easy all right it's it's perfectly fine so what do we think guys what do we think john what do you think jamin what do you think hope what do you think Ilda, what do you think ganiat Okay, so what do you guys think? So let's get that done before before we move on. Just, you know, very, very quickly. Yes or no. So you can just use a yes or if you send in a yes, I know, okay, so you actually believe it can be done. If you said no, then I know that that's the other way around. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's get let's get them coming in. Oh, no one believes it can be done because uh, from the because I'm currently not getting any more response. Okay, so Jamin says yes. John says achievable, but requires a lot of work, and one has to be intentional about it. All right, fantastic, John. I've taken notes of uh, I've taken notes of your response. Okay, so John, don't worry. At the end of the session, just send me um, you know, at the end of the session, just you know, uh, just ask a question or just remind me. So maybe you can just place on the chat box say, oh, I sister, you said you have something for me. Okay, so I have something for you, John. I have something for you. Suzanne, Jamil, uh, PJ, Lanzos, all right, and also Iberi. So I have something for you guys. I'll take notes of that. At the end of the session, just let me know. So I just remember you said you have something for us, okay? All right, fantastic. So yes, it can be done. But let's see, let's see. Okay, oh, so now we are having more responses. <laughs> but yeah, let's see. Let's go, into, let's go into business analysis, okay? What is business analysis? What is th this all about? How do you become... A business analyst how do you end up making the cool benjamins how do you end up having a good work-life balance for you to be a business analyst there are some things that you actually need to um, you actually need to know some requirements we talked about process flow that is just one there are other things and what are they <laughs> okay the first thing is that you need to have a good grasp of data analytics. You need to be able to analyze data using data tools, all right? Because you are going to be leveraging data analytics in your role as a business analyst. And of, of course, you also need to learn about Agile Essentials. So Agile, that is the current framework that most organizations use now because it's key on flexibility, on getting things done as soon as possible, all right? That is the framework that many organizations use now. But, you know, I think we'll, we'll spend more time on this later on, all right? But you also need to not learn about the software development lifecycle. When an organization is building an application, when an organization is building a software, what do you do? From this stage, what is the next stage you, 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 know, you move to? What is the next thing you do? How do you interact with the developers? How do you plan? How do you design? How do you implement the SDLC? And of course, you also need to learn about the requirement fundamentals, elicitation, analysis, specification, and approval, how you can gather requirements from the stakeholders as regards a project that is being worked on in the organization, of course. Okay. And of course, you also want to learn about business analysis toolkits that you leverage Agile and Scrum for projects. You um also you are going to be working on projects. All right, so you also need to have a good project a good portfolio that houses the different projects you've worked on that agile online project collaboration and you know all of these things will now make you to become a master business analyst and of course you also need to know how to use ai the fact ai is not going to take your job does not mean you should not know how to use ai because there's this popular phrase that says ai is not coming to take people's jobs rather people that can use ai are going to replace those that can't use AI. So if you're a business analyst that can't use AI, and you'll probably be replaced by a business analyst that can use AI, okay? And so you, of course, need to know how you can leverage a GPT in your role as a business analyst as a result of the current times that we are in now. AI here, AI there, AI everywhere, okay? But yeah, 
So as a business analyst, there are different roles you can actually work in. It's not like uh, once you are a business analyst, the only thing you can do is business analysis. Like uh, when you go out there to apply for jobs and that the only thing you are going to search for is that of a business analyst. Not really. You might be wondering, if I go through this course, if I actually become a business analyst, is a business analyst, is this, is it only a business analyst role that I can function in? Oh, I, so sir, I went out there, I searched for business analyst roles and they were not, you know, it, it wasn't a lot. Then why did you say the WEF said, you know, there are a whole lot of business analyst roles? They are probably not searching, searching right. As a business analyst, you are not just going to be working in roles tied to business analyst. You also get to work as a process analyst, as a business architect, as a process improvement analyst, as a product reliability engineer, a business process analyst, a business system analyst, IT business analyst, and also, of course, requirement engineer. And one that is not here is a business data analyst, just as a business analyst. If you ask me, I'd say that's amazing. And I'm sure you, you think that as well. Okay. So, but what is business analysis? Because I used to say, you've talked about business analysts. You know, we want to make the, you know, the Benjamins want to have good work-life balance. You can transition, you know, smoothly to become a business analyst. You know, business analyst this, business analyst that, business analyst everywhere. But what really is a business analyst? Who is a business analyst? What is business analysis all about? Easy, simple, and sweet. ES raised to part two. Business analysis is all about you communicating with the stakeholders. A business analyst is the bridge, all right, between non-technical stakeholders and technical stakeholders. Now, who are the non-technical stakeholders? We're talking about the CEO. We're talking about the CFO. We are talking about the COO. We are talking about the CGO. We are talking about the CFR, the CDR, the C, you know, all of the C's you can think about. <laughs> okay, all of the C's you can think about the, you know, C, chief of this, chief of that, chief of that. You know, those are the non-technical stakeholders. All right. The business analysis serves as a link between the non-technical stakeholders and the technical stakeholders. The technical stakeholders are those persons that actually, you know, do the, the work. All right, and I'm talking about the analysts, the developers that are actually going to build the project. All right, you serve as a link between both of them. But what do I mean link? What do I mean by link? Because if you say link, it seems like, oh, you need to take note of what one is saying and then pass it across to the other, just as you can see. So this is a non-technical stakeholder. This is the technical stakeholder. And the business analyst is in the middle. But is it not easy? for the non-technical stakeholder to just go ahead and, you know, place a call to the technical stakeholder and dish out information, you know, things that 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 they need to get done. Why really do we need this middleman? Okay, why really do we need this middleman? Why really do we need the business analyst? Now, the business analyst is there because the business analyst is not just about serving as that bridge, but rather also tries to take the organization from where they are at the moment to where they want to be. All right. So the organization is currently making, you know, maybe um, let's say the, the organization currently, this is the way they do things. So they make five million every year, maybe five million dollars every year, and they are looking to make maybe ten million dollars the next year. Or maybe there's this particular process, maybe customers, uh, the way customers purchase things at the moment, the organization does not like that. They are looking to make things a whole lot better. The business analyst takes that organization from where they are to where they want to be. The business analyst goes ahead to map out processes just like you've seen today. The business analyst goes ahead to carry out what we call elicitation, requirement gathering, speaking to the non-technical stakeholders, knowing what they actually want for the organization, understanding the mission, understanding the vision, and then transferring that to the technical stakeholders. And what do I mean? So let's say the organization wants to build an application. All right. The organization wants to build an application and they hire a developer and they tell the developer, hello, please, I need you to build us an application. The developer can't just go ahead to begin building the application. It, will, it needs to know what is the application for? What should the application do? All right. Now, let's even put it this way. 
let's say the the let's say the um the non-technical stakeholders. So let's say the CEO now wants to build an app, wants an application that customers can purchase items for and wants a developer to build that application so customers can you know order from the company using that application. The developer comes in. Okay. The developer has been told that I need you to build an application that customers can make orders from. But that is not enough to build an application. Okay? That is not enough to build an application. Something is needed. And what is needed? The business analyst. And why? Because the developer does not know really what the CEO wants. It could be that the CEO wants the application to fly, or maybe the CEO wants the application to be able to make customers fly. I know it might be a bit far-fetched, but you know, just stay with me now, okay? So maybe the CEO wants the uh, wants the um the wants an application that once a customer orders the application, the customer grows wings and you know starts flying and can you know it gives the, the application to give you the the ability of flight. Okay, maybe that's what the CEO wants. So the business analyst would now need to communicate that specific need to the developer. That's look, I know you're building an application that customers can order from, but we want you to actually build an application that customers can order from and fly. Won't you guys like to use that application? Or you guys don't want to fly? <laughs> Would you like to use um, such an application? An application that can make you fly. So maybe you just all you need to do is just order. So you order, then you go ahead, you, you sprout wings, and then you begin to fly. Do you want to use such, such you know such a thing? Or are we scared? Because I know I know back in Nigeria, so in Nigeria, you know, it's it's quite um, you know, <laughs> so people don't like to fly, especially at night. Okay. <laughs> is that the case for, for us on the call? Is that the case? So like I said, interaction, interaction, interaction. All right, so I need to know, I need to know. Would you like to use an application that as soon as you order, the application will, make, will give you the, you know, to give you the power of flight and you'll be able to fly. What do we think? What do we think? So Susan says Air Force One fly. <laughs> so Susan, so the, the kind of flight, you know, fly like a bird. Oh, so Hope says yes, fly to my bank account. All right. So so Hope has an uh, you know another kind of idea as related what we mean, you know, by by flight. Okay. Uh Eberi says yes, at least I won't buy flight tickets. So Eberi would have free plane rides. You don't need to, you know, have to book months in advance. You don't need to have to, you know, start paying you some because you are trying to um you're trying to move from one country to the other. All right, you have your own personal first class ticket. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah, says air peace flight. <laughs> All right, air peace flight. So, so yeah. All right. So, so, so that's the case. That's the case. So that is the reason why we need the business analyst to get all of those things up and running. Now, over here at Analytics, if you register for the business analysis program, you are going to be learning all of those things. All right. Of course, not the ability to fly, but maybe something we might add in in due time. But yeah, you're going to be learning a bunch of things. And what are you going to be learning? All right. You are going to learn Excel, Power BI and SQL. That is data analytics. Because as a business analyst, you need the flavor of data analytics. Okay. So you are going to learn about data analytics. You are going to learn, uh, you know, how to map out your processes, you know, um, Dig a whole lot deeper into what we did today. All right, your project initiation planning, your agile and scrum for project, your SDLC requirement fundamentals, elicitation, all of these things that you know I've explained. All right, so you are going to be learning all of these things to become a master business analyst. And of course, you're going to be using tools such as Excel, such as Power BI on SQL for you know speaking with your databases. I like to call SQL the language of data all right so you're going to be learning all of these tools uh you know for your data manipulation for your data analytics and then of course lucid charts draw the tile for your process mapping you have your confluence your GIS, and your trello for project management and all of that and um yeah and if you take a look at this so this is the these are the average salaries all right of the of the business analyst all right 
And this, of course, when they say average, average means, you know, you have those above and you have some slightly beneath, okay? Because depending on your role as a business analyst, so is there a senior, are you a senior business analyst? Are you, uh, you know, uh, maybe a uh, business analyst lead or something? Okay, so of course that would, that would uh, affect your, your pay. But as we can see in the UK, all right, so the average is 52,000 pounds, all right, in the UK. In Canada, we have 74,000 Canadian dollars. And in the US, we have 85,000 Canadian dollars. All right, that's, so that's the average pay for the business analyst, all right? That's if you're, of course, you're looking to get into this, you know, earn some cool cash and see that you can have a career growth. So at this point, I'm going to be at this point. And then maybe two years time, I'm going to be promoted to this point, you know, all of that. All right. But yeah, so that's what business analysis is all about. Now, all of our programs, including the business analysis program, it comes with a free internship for you to be able to, you know, craft your CV and to ensure that your portfolio stands out. The business analysis program, so yet analytics, the business analysis program is for four months. You get to learn for two months, all right? Two months of intensive learning, and you get to intern for two months. And during the internship, you are going to building an actual application. I repeat, you are going to be building an actual application. Of course, you are not going to code the application, okay? But you are going to serve as a business analyst in a team that is actually building an application. So you are going to be, you know, collaborating with the Scrum masters. You are going to be collaborating with developers. You are going to be collaborating with product owners. All of that, a very, very well-crafted internship, all right? So all of this would help you to have a standard CV and a standard portfolio for when you do look to get that job as a business analyst, all right? And once you get the slide, you can just take a look at, you know, just click on this. So this is a portfolio of one of the participants that, uh, you know, took the program. So you get to see how some of the projects that you'll be working on. Because one thing that we usually advise, you all of your projects, you want to place them in a portfolio. So whenever you are asked for, oh, and can I see your portfolio or have you worked on projects? You have something that you can always send that you can deliver in next to no time that will contain all of your best work in good and well detailed manner. All right. All right. So don't worry, you get to learn how you can build a portfolio. Okay. All right. So what separates you from the competition? Oh, I should say, you've talked about the fact that we should become a business analyst. You've talked about the fact that business analyst is easy to transition into. You've talked about the fact that people have been able to get jobs as business analysts. You've told me what business analysis is all about, how, what I need to learn to become a business analyst. All right. We even talked about the fact that we are looking to build an application that can make you fly. <laughs> okay. But really, what separates you from the competition? Because... You are trying to transition into business analysis. Someone else is trying to transition into business analysis. Many persons are trying to transition to become a business analyst. So what now makes you separate from them? What would now make you get the job and not others? What would now make you, or rather, what would make a recruiter to pick you and not others? What would make you stand out as a business analyst? TV layered approach. TV layered approach. What's the first? We take it step by step, okay? Now, we over here in Tenalytics, all right, we have a well structured TV layered approach. Having a good, okay, having a good, you know, work life balance, all right? And of course, uh, being like the guy that we saw at the start of this, uh, at the start of the session, you know, at the first page of the slide, because we all just said that. We want to be like that guy, okay? So yeah, so these, the first thing, the first layer, what, what we call level one is, has been, you know, structured to position you for success, just like I said. But before I go into this, I would like to tell you about Kunle, all right? So I love telling the story about Kunle. So there's this, so is there a Kunle on the call? Okay, so there's no Kunle on the call, all right? But I'll tell you a story about Kunle. I'll tell you about I'll tell you a story about Kunle. Now, story, story, story. Once upon a time, time, time. Once upon a time, there was an individual 
called Kunle. All right? There was an individual called Kunle. Now, Kunle, in the year 2019, decided that he wants to actually transition into tech. Kunle, in the year 2019, said that, oh, wow, I want to make big bucks. Oh, wow, I want to smile when I'm walking. Oh, wow, I want to, you know, be like that guy we saw at the start of the session with the watch, the glasses, and the headset. <laughs> okay, I want to be like that guy. And then Kunle went ahead to what? Kunle went ahead to actually, you know, learn how to, you know, transition into tech. So he went ahead and learned how to be a business analyst, got the skills for the business analyst. So he just he took some courses online, you know, just browse, just in in its own in its own um, belief that you know it got the skills to become a business analyst but it's the year 2024 i'd like to believe all right yeah it's the year 2024 so i don't think we time traveled or anything all right so it's the year 2024 but kunle still doesn't have a job in tech kunle still doesn't work as a business analyst Kunle still hasn't gotten that fantastic work-life balance. Why? Why? Kunle is distraught. Kunle thinks that, oh, tech is a lie. It's only the few that make it out of the many. Kunle thinks that what I heard people say, it was false. Because I got the skills and I still have no job. Kunle was devastated or rather Kunle is devastated okay now what was Kunle missing why did Kunle not get a job even after getting the skills as a business analyst that's because Kunle was oblivious to a fact what is that fact it is one thing for you to know how to do a job and it's another thing for a recruiter to know you can do the job. Okay? Wow. Did we get that? So I'll repeat that. I think probably I'll make that quote again and then I'll put, uh, so this will be by ISUSA. All right, so by ISUSA. So probably I'll publish that or something. Okay? So yeah, I said, it's one thing for you to be able to do the job and it's another thing for a recruiter to know that you can do the job okay for you to be able to do the job is the first 50 percent for the recruiter to know you can do the job is the other 50 percent the first 50 percent contains the technical skills you learning how to map out a process you learning how to you know carry out your elicitation you learning how to you know take a look at your gap analysis how you can take an organization from where they are at the moment to where they want to be all of those things are the first 50 percent the other 50 percent which now tells the recruiter that you can do the job is what we could tell them the employability services all right so over here at Analytics, we have TV structured layer approach, just like I mentioned. And each and every one of those things is to ensure that you are well structured with, you are well structured, you are ready to get the job, and that you're well equipped with the other 50%. What does the 50% entail? What is the other 50% we offer in addition to the skills you will be learning? The first thing we have is the CV review session. You want to be able to, you know, craft a good CV because, oh, I built a plane last year, but how do you place that on the CV that you actually did build a plane? How do you take your current experience? Oh, I, so, sir, I've not worked for five years. Oh, I, so, sir, I've been working as a medical doctor for, you know, 10 years now, and I'm looking to transition to become a business analyst. How do you take all of that experience and make it in, and turn it into a business analysis experience. How? How do you craft a CV that passes the ATS system, which is the applicant tracking system? How do you craft a CV that at first glance, the recruiter falls in love? How? You'll be learning all of that in the CV review session where you get to have a one-on-one -on -one 
discussion with a, with a professional that will take you through all of the tips and tricks in crafting a well compelling CV. The first, what is the second? LinkedIn optimization. LinkedIn is what I call the Facebook for professionals. All right? LinkedIn is what I call the Facebook for professionals. And we all know Facebook. All right? LinkedIn is the Facebook for professionals. On LinkedIn, you have numerous recruiters. On LinkedIn, you have people reaching out to other people offering jobs. I, for one, have actually recruited on LinkedIn. And how did I do that? There was a time whereby I was looking to recruit someone for a particular role. And I went on LinkedIn. I went to the search bar. I, I you know, searched for the, the job title. And as soon as I did that, I saw a list of individuals. And then I clicked on, you know, I think I clicked on the first five or the first six. Okay. I selected the profiles. I took a look at the profile, trying to identify the person or the individual that has the skills that I need for that role. And as soon as I identified those, I think I saw like three, all right? I sent them a message of, you know, of course, so you can, you know, send private messages on LinkedIn. I sent them a message and told them to send in their CV, to send me their CV. So listen to this, a recruiter reaching out to you, telling you to send a CV. You are pretty sure you have gotten the job, okay? A recruiter reaching out to you personally, telling you to send a CV. That is possible on LinkedIn. But how do you ensure that your profile is something that is attractive to, to recruiters? How do you ensure that your profile is optimized? How do you ensure that you get what we call emails, whereby when there are new job openings, that it's that you get the an email telling you, oh, there's a new job opening for you know that of a business analyst, and I think you are a good um you are a good uh, match. Go ahead and apply. How do you do all of these things? LinkedIn optimization. You get to learn all of that in the program. If you're interested in freelancing, if maybe what you like, uh, you know, you don't like to have, um, you like to work at your own pace. You know, you, you just want to, you want to decide I'm going to work today, I'll sleep tomorrow, I'll work tomorrow, and then I'll work the next day, and then I'll sleep for five months, okay? You, you want to detect your work hours. You want to work freely. You're interested in freelancing. Then Upwork is for you. Now, the Upwork optimization session will tell you how you can actually leverage Upwork to take, take you through the rigors of Upwork. Upwork utilizes a currency system called Connect. You get to learn how you can actually leverage all of those things. You get to learn how to apply. You get to learn how to write a well-compelling proposal. You get to know if, if actually bidding with more Connect would get you the job, most likely or not. You get to learn the tips and tricks in landing a job, in landing a gig on Upwork. For some of us that, you know, we just we just went to, uh, so maybe we, we, we just migrated. So we are currently, maybe we're in, in France at the moment. Maybe we're in Australia. We're in Canada. So we just moved in. We're in the UK. We're in the US. And you are confused as to how you can actually navigate the job market. You are confused as to how you can actually go ahead and apply for jobs, how to apply for the job, the size to apply for the job, the time to apply for the job, how to navigate the job market. You're confused. Over here, you get to speak with professionals that have done those things, that have, you know, been in your current um, situation. You get to speak with professionals that have been able to navigate the job market effectively and efficiently. What they did right, they get to tell you what they did wrong, they get to tell you. So you replicate what was done right. And of course, you don't do what was done wrong, all right? Thereby hastening your process of you landing at that role. All right, now, the CV review session, the LinkedIn optimization, the Upwork, the navigating the job market, all of those things are meant to get your feet in the door. All of these things are meant to do what? To get your feet in the door. But the fact you've gotten your feet in the door doesn't mean you are fully in the organization. You will agree with me. We have so many individuals that they get their, their CVs approved, but they flop during the interview stage. And then it's all back to square one. That is the reason why we have the job and interview pr preparation session. The job and interview preparation sh session is to ensure that, wow, your feet is now in the door. All of those different things we went through, they've 
ensure that your feet is in the door. Now, we're now going to prepare you. Once you've gotten an interview, you reach out to us, we schedule a session with you, and then we prepare you for the interview, taking you through questions that would like most likely to be asked, how you should go ahead and answer those questions, key things you should do, things you should not do, things you should say, things you should not say, to ensure that you receive a full push into the organization and that you land that role. Now you've landed the role. But the organization wants to know, are you who you say you are? Because during the interview process, you could claim that, oh, see, in my last organization, I built five airplanes in two hours and no one helped me. I was the only one. I built the first airplane, the second airplane, the fourth, five, fifth, six, six airplanes. Maybe you add in one. And I built it in one hour. No one helped me. And the recruiters are excited. They're like, wow, fantastic. It shows that you're a really good worker. You know, you're the kind of person we want. Okay. But, and you know, they, 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 you get the job. But the recruiters would want to confirm if you are who you say you are. Everyone can say, I did this, I did that in an interview. But did you really do that? And that is the reason why we have recommendation and reference letters, whereby they get to ask a previous organization, you know, the previous organization you worked for, that this person, are they really who they say they are? Is there a reason why they left the organization? Yeah, are there any bad traits we should know about? And of course, as a participant with analytics, you know that you are going to be able to, you know, reference us because as soon as you register for the program, you get to place on your LinkedIn business analyst consultant with analytics. All right. So while you're training with us, you're actually working on for us. You're working on, you know, different projects, real life projects that you are going to be giving and, you know, gathering experience with all of that. So you're going to place business analysis consultant with analytics. And with you doing that, you can now, you know, uh, whenever you, you are requested for, uh, whenever I look for a reference letter is requested for, you can always reach out to us and, you know, say, um, you give them our details and then they reach out to us and then, you know, we provide a fantastic reference. We receive not less than 10 references per day to show you that it is easy to get a job, like I said. All right. So that's something else that, you you know, you are going to get. And of course, for the level two, you have weekly mentorship sessions because, Sometimes you can apply for a role and you don't get called. It happens to the best of us. Oh, I, so sir, I have been applying. I applied for six roles. I applied for, I applied for 20 roles. I sent my CV and I'm tired. I'm not getting any, I'm not getting any, um, you know, rejection letters. Or uh, we are sorry, we are sorry, we are sorry. Uh, thank you for applying, unfortunately. You know, all of that. I'm tired. I want to give up. Sometimes you need someone to tell you that, oh, don't worry. Don't give up, you know, just hang it there, just hang it there, all right? Rejections happen to the best of us. All you need to do, you know, just keep on applying. We take a look at your CV, you know, we identify what, what might be the problem. Is there, a, 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 is there an issue with the strategy you are using? Fix all of that and ensure that you, you get back on your feet, you keep on applying, and that you eventually get a job. Be mentored every week. You've gotten a job, but you need help. Oh, there was something that I was told to do, and I'm really confused as to how to get it done. We offer on the job support. So you can always reach out to us, you know, and then we'll tell you also, oh, okay, to do this, all you need to do is just get this, get that, get that, and, you know, you're good. And we guide you, and now you can actually get all of that done. And one other thing that we offer, so this uh, we offer, all right, so this, we started this at the, um, you know, at the start of the year. All right, so this was not available, I think, um, yeah, um, uh, for previous years. And that is, we are promising you, we are guaranteeing you a job interview one month after completing the program, the training with us, all right? So as long as you do everything that we tell you to do, all right, we are guaranteeing you a job interview one month after completing the program with us. This is a guarantee from us, all right? So all of these things, uh, to provide you the other fifty percent to ensure that you don't end up as Kunle, to ensure that you don't just get the job, you don't just get the skills, you get the job, and of course, you make the cash. <laughs> Are we together, everyone? Are we together? So are we understanding the you know the tips and tricks to actually get that role? Like I said, it's not just it's not just getting the skills; it is 
letting the recruiters know that you have the skills. So Hope says yes. So who else is who, who else got that? Who else got that? Okay. So like I said, interactions, interactions, interactions. All right. So Hope is with me. I remember I promised some persons. I told some person that I have something for them. All right. So Avery is with me as well. Ruben is with me. Yes. All right. Fantastic. iPhone's the same. Ganiat is the same. Fantastic. Good work, everyone. All right. So, yes, that's it, everyone. That's it. Now, I would like to show you what the classroom looks like. You know, because once you register for the program, you're going to be, you're going to be, um, um, set, you're going to be placed in a classroom. So I'm going to show you what the business analysis classroom looks like. So this is the, this is business analysis. This is the April quartz. That's um, those from North America. So we have the, um, the class walk. So now you see request for reference. All right. So you have, so if you need, you know, if you need a teen analytics, a teen analytics reference as a participant, so you can just, you know, utilize that. And then if I scroll all the way down, so you're going to see that the first class that they had was the Excel classes. Um, all right. So we have the MX Excel, uh, Excel class one. All right. And then over here, you can see the materials for the classes. So we have the materials whereby you get to uh, just a moment. So just load that in. Okay, so you know you get to learn about Excel, and then over here you have a case study. Okay, so that's all right. So here's the case study. So the case study, these are actual real life projects that you're going to be working on. So you're not just here to learn how to use the tools. You're here to learn how to use the tools to solve actual business problems because you're not interested in in Excel. All right. What you are really interested in is making money with Excel. All right. And this is the reason why case studies are relevant to show you how this is how you use Excel in the business. All right. So you get to, you know, you get to work on different case studies. You have the, the, uh, you know, the data set that you can download. And then if you mix a class, all right. So let's say you have, your course, you have classes on Saturdays and Sundays. So let's say you mix a class and that um, you are, uh, you uh so you missed the class maybe you, there was an emergency or there's something you had to attend to over here we have the class recording all right that you can click on and then it would the, uh, every one of our sessions are recorded okay so even if you miss a class you are well you know you are you are covered you know that you have a recording that you can just go over okay so you can come over to this point click on the link and then it will take you to the video and to play the entire class so even if you were not in the class you actually do end up being in the class and we have excel class too we also have you know, another case study over here. And then after the, um, so, all right. So after the Excel classes, we have, uh, so we have the Power BI classes. So we have Power BI, you know, you get to learn how to use Power BI. You get to learn how to, so you have a presentation that you're going to be giving, all right, that you're going to work on. And then you come over, you, you know, you join a call like this, you present, and then, you know, we get to listen to you to, you know, it's like, it's a learning process. So if there are things that we, that you are not, not doing right at the moment, you get to get you get to have real life, um, real time feedback on things you can improve on. So whatever it is you learned in class, you get you are given an assignment, and then you get to have a presentation on that assignment. All right, and then of course you can see you have the mentorship session, the CV review sessions. You have uh, you know this uh, database, you know working with SQL. You have SQL class one, SQL class two. And then, you, of course, you also have your mentorship session, your LinkedIn session, and then you have your BA classes, all right? That's your uh, business analysis classes because, firstly, you get a flavor of data analytics, like I mentioned earlier, your Excel, your Power BI, and your SQL. Yeah, that's your SQL. And then you get into business analysis in Popper, whereby you get to have an introduction to business analysis. You get to learn about your project initiation planning, uh, you know, um, this is another mentor session, all right, where you get to learn, uh, you know, different things. Uh, you have your drop-in session if you have questions. You have you get to learn your business case, your SDLC, your star approach, you know, all of that, all right? So, and over here, you can see there's the interview prep and clarity session. So if maybe you have a, you have a, uh, an interview, so you can just come over here, click on this, you know, click on the link so you can book an interview. And then you get to have a one-on-one -on -one session Okay, and then you are you are prepped for that interview, and of course you have a CV template, job site links that you can also use. All right, and then uh, uh, so you also have a job application tracker because we are not just we are not just 
we're not just here to teach you, all right? You need to get the job. Like, it's a must, okay? So what we do is that we track your job application for each and every one of our participants. As soon as you apply for a job, you come over here and then you, uh, you know, you insert the job, you know, the job details. And then we track the number of jobs you applied to. So if we notice that you've gotten to, let's say, 25 jobs, you've applied for 25 jobs, for 30 jobs, and you've not gotten just one interview, not even one, we reach out to you, all right? Reach out to you personally, and then we have a one-on-one -on -one session whereby we get to really take a look at what you are doing. Because you applied for 30 roles and you didn't even get one interview. One interview. <laughs> so that there, there, there's something wrong, all right? So we get to have a one-on-one -on -one with you. Take a look at everything you've been doing, the step-by-step -step approach, like the CV. What time do you apply for the job, all right? What is wrong? Okay, so that is what the job application tracker is for to ensure you get that role. All right, so that uh, yeah, so that's it. So that's what the classroom. That's what the classroom looks like, everyone. Okay, and um, yeah. So moving on, an escort. Okay, and the next quarter is going to begin on the eighth on the eighth of June. That's is um I think about about eight days, about eight days from now. All right. And how can you become a part of that court? How can you get to benefit from all of these things? How can you get to not become Kunle? The fictitious Kunle now, of course. So I, I hope there's no Kunle on the call. <laughs> okay. So yeah, how can you get to not become Kunle? How can you get to actually learn the skills and get the job? By registering for the program. How, how do you register? All right. This, um, you register using this payment link. Okay. Now, this is the uh, this is the fee for the business analysis program. So, we have, if you're in, if you're in Nigeria and you're looking to pay using NERA, so the fee is 900000 All right. In Canadian dollars, it's 1125 Canadian dollars. In euros, we have 730 euros, 625 pounds, and 750 dollars. All right. But we are currently offering a 20% discount. And just for the first 20 persons to join on the call. All right. So actually, though, I think um, I think it's not actually exceeded 20. All right. But we decided to ex uh, you know extend by uh, I think 10 more persons. I would need to get that, you know, that fact correct now. Okay, because a lot of persons usually reach out to us and us email, you know, emails asking, oh, 10 analytics team, oh please, I would like to uh, you know, I would like to be a part of the discount, but I was told that. Um, I was told that it's, you know, it has, um, that the, you know, the discount slots are already filled in. So is there some, is there a way you can help, you know, all of that? So that's the reason why we actually decided to still extend this a bit because this discount started at the beginning of this month. So of course it's filled already. All right. So when it started, it was just the first 20 persons, but we are, it's, it's, but we want to extend that by, you know, another 10 persons there about So. I would get that figure straight, okay? But we are looking to extend it by just a few more persons. So, and for, uh, so we are having, uh, so the discount is still running, all right, 20% discount. So instead of you getting to, having to pay the full amount of 900,000 Naira, that's if you are paying in Naira, you get to pay 720,000 Naira, all right? That's the discounted amount. And of course, if you're paying in Canadian dollars, that's 900 Canadian dollars, in euro, 580 euros. In pounds, 500 pounds. And if you're paying in dollars, you get to pay $600. Now, I should say, I would like to be a part of this. Okay? I would like to be a part, I would like to be a part of this, uh, I would like to be a part of this program. But at the moment, I really don't have the full 720,000 Naira to pay. Okay? At the moment, I would like to key into that discount. But I don't have the full 720,000 um, Naira to pay, or I don't have the full $600 to pay. So what you can do is that you can pay in two installments. So the first installment, you get to pay the first installment before the start of the program, that's before June 8, and then one month after the program begins, and that will be the end of the month of June, you get to pay the other amount, all right, that's the balance. So if you're paying in pounds, for instance, instead of paying the five hundred, um, the five hundred uh, pounds, that's of course if you uh, if you're eligible for the discount, instead of making that 
payments, all right, like at um at a stretch, you can split that into two. You can pay two hundred and fifty pounds, okay, for for your first installment, and then you pay one month after the program or after the program begins. That's at the end of June. You get to pay the or the um the second installment of your hundred and fifty pounds, and of course for Nera. 500,000 Naira for the first um is for the first payment and then for the subsequent um for the second payment you get to pay 220,000 Naira. All right? And of course, you have the other currencies in there. But again, I should say I really really want to be a part of the discount. And at the moment, I'm not expecting to I don't have 500,000 to make the first installment at this moment but at the end of the month okay maybe maybe in a couple of days time maybe tomorrow next it's already the end of the month okay but maybe before june 8 you're expecting to you know get the you're expecting to have the full five hundred thousand. but you want to key into the discounts to avoid paying the full amount which is now hundred thousand. all right you want to key into the discount but you don't have the full five hundred thousand to make your first installment what you can do is that you can pay a part. So let's say you have two hundred thousand, or you have two hundred and fifty thousand, or you have four hundred thousand. You can make that payment, and then before June eight, okay, before June eight, you make the balance of the first installment. So let's say I want to ensure I came to the discount. All right. Well, at the moment I don't have five hundred thousand, but I have let's say I have two hundred and fifty thousand, and I want to ensure I came to that discount. What can I do? I can go ahead and make the payments for 250,000 now, 250,000 era now, okay? And then before June 8th, before the start of the program, I ensure I complete my first installment by sending in the other 250,000 Naira. And then I get to pay the second installment one month after the program begins, okay? So this is to ensure that you key into the discount. So you can also just scan this. So of course, like I mentioned, you are going to get the slides if you fill them the attendance form and you stay to the end of the session. Okay, you are going to get the slides. So one other thing that you can do is that you can just scan this and it will take you to the payment platform. And then this is the payment link. So I will show you what the payments link, uh, what the payments platform looks like. Okay, so as soon as you click on that payment link, it's going to take you over to the analytics enrollment center. And over here, if you have a question for us, all right, so you can click on chat with analytics and, you know, you can chat with us and um, a customer success representative would, of course, be on ground to assist you in any way they can. OK, and then if you also want access to our multiple vouchers, so we currently offer eight programs here at analytics. That's data analytics, business analysis, data engineering, the um, data science. You have um, your cyber security, your scrum master your financial analytics, your HR analytics, okay? So you can get access to each and every one of those programs, you know, to take a look at what they actually entail, what you've been learning by clicking on this program voucher. And then once you scroll down, so you have the payment, um, uh, you have the payment structure in here. You can scroll all the, all the way down. You see, you have the direct transfer. That's if you are looking to make payments by making, uh, by sending in, uh, you know, by making a bank transfer. So over here, you see we have, uh, we have the uh, the UK account details. All right. So this is the UK account details. So you have the account name, the account number, the sort code, the um, you know, the uh, bank. You know, you have all of that. So you can make payments using the UK account if you are looking to make a direct transfer and you are looking to pay in pounds, or you can use the euro account details that if you are looking to pay in euro. All right. So yeah, yes, the account, or you can use the um, you know, the dollar account, that's if you're in the US, you're looking to pay in, in dollars or the Canadian account details, if you're looking to pay in Canadian dollars or the Nigerian account details, if you're looking to pay in there. Okay. So if you want to make a direct transfer, you can use any of these bank accounts. Okay. But if you want to pay with your card, so let's say maybe you want to pay in CDs, for example, so you're in Ghana and you want to, you know, you want to pay in CDs, or maybe you are you actually want to, you only want to pay in pounds, but you are not looking to make a tra direct transfer. You want to use your card. You scroll all the way down, and over here you see card stroke online payment. Okay, and what you do is that you select the program you want to register for. So let's say I want to register for the business analysis program. 
I come over here and I click on business analysis and it will take me to this point. Okay, so just a moment. All right, so it takes me to this point. Okay, and then over here, I can, you know, insert the, um, you know, what, um, um, I can insert the amount I'm looking to pay, okay? So it's going to take note of the currency. It's going to take note of your location. So at the moment, I'm currently in Nigeria, all right? And that's the reason why you have Naira in here. So if you're in the UK, so this will be pounds, all right? So wherever you're located, if you're in Ghana, this will be cities. It will take note of the currency of the country you are in, okay? And then let's say I want to make the um, so, um, the first installment of, let's say, 500,000. So I can go ahead and insert five. Excuse me. I can go ahead and insert five hundred thousand. Okay. The limit for when you want to pay with your card is four hundred thousand. That if you are using the um the uh the yes, that if you are looking to register for the business analysis program and you want to use your card, the limit is four hundred thousand. But, but like I said, if you want to pay maybe two hundred and fifty, you know, to key into the discount and then make the completion before the um before June eight. What you can do is that you can, you know, make use of the direct transfer. So with the direct transfer, you can um, send in the amounts that you currently have at the moment. But let's say I want to send in 500,000. I go ahead and click on proceeds to pay. So by clicking on proceeds to pay, it takes me to this point. And then I can insert my name. So my name, Aishusa, okay, Aishusa Gbalaho. And then my email address, so I'll say aishusa.analytics.org. Okay, and then I can insert my phone number. So I'm just going to insert a bunch of things. So um, just a moment, so I'll just say, uh, just insert all of that. And then I go ahead and I click on proceed. So by clicking on proceed, this should, uh, so I have this pop-up and then I get to insert my card details. So I insert my card details and I go ahead to pay, okay? So uh, this is what the payment platform looks like. Now, as soon as you've made the, as soon as you've made payments, you're going to receive a receipt. Now, it's either you make payments with the direct transfer, you would receive a receipt from your bank, of course. If you make payments using the online method, you're going to receive a, re a receipt that will be sent to your email address. What you want to do next is that you want to come back here, scroll over to upload your receipts here. So over here, you see you have upload your receipts here. So you want to click on that and it will take you to a form, all right? And then in the form, you get to fill in your details and then, you know, you attach your receipt. And then um, you're going to get a confirmation email from us. And subsequently, you get your welcome kit. And then you get to, you know, uh, to be a part of the class. Okay. So, uh, so yeah. So, that's it, everyone. So, uh, registration closes on Tuesday 4th. So, please, you want to ensure you, and you, if you want to be a part of the squad, you want to key into the discount, you know, you want to make your payments, you want to ensure you do that before the, the 4th of june because that is when all of this is going to close for this cohort all right and so you want to ensure you make your payment now and if you are looking to maybe you are looking to uh maybe you are not really ready for this june cohort maybe you want to begin in july register for the july cohort all right but you are unsure if we are going to have the discount you know frequently because i myself I'm unsure, all right? So, all right? So, um, I'm unsure. Adeza is unsure, all right? Efemina is unsure. Each and every one of us, we are unsure if the discount is going to run in July, in August, all right? Because these are things that, you know, we uh, come up with on the spur of the moment, okay? And, um, but, so, if you want to stick into this discount, because when you want to register, there might not be a discount then. You want to key into the discount, but you don't want to begin now. You want to begin in July. You can still go ahead and make your payment. All right. And then when you have, when you click on upload your receipt, you're going to see a section that says, what cohort would you like to begin? All right. So you can just select July and, um, you know, or select, um, I think you can, you know, you can defer it for two months. All right. So you can just make that happen. And then you key into your the discount, you make the payments now. And then when it's time for the July quarter, you get to slide into the class without, um, you know, without any other, you know, um, sort of payment as long as you've been able to complete all the payments that uh, are necessary. All right. So these are some other testimonials that, of course, you can go through once you get once you get access to the slide. Listen to these people speak. Listen to the fact that it's actually easy to transition into tech. All right. Do we have questions, people? 
So if you have a question, just use the raise hand icon. I'll call on you to ask your question. Okay, so if you have a question for me, just use the raise hand icon, or you can still, you know, send your questions to the chat box. All right, and I will call on you to ask your question. And then we call it a day, of course. Any question? So if you have a question, you can use the raise hand icon or you can also send that to the chat box and I'll just take a look at that and answer maybe one or two questions and then we call it, uh, we call it today. So Bushalai's asking, what is the duration of the course? All right, so for the business analysis program, you get to learn for four months. Oh, rather, sorry, you don't learn for four months. The program is for four months. You learn for two months and then you intern for two months. Okay. So you learn for um so you learn for two months and then you intern for, for two months. So Ebola, you're asking if we have a physical office. So uh physical office is in Canada. All right. So yes, Ebola, all right. So we have a physical office. So in case if you're asking about that as um due to you know the reference request, because you know, when you ask for reference, they usually want have uh, you know um a fiscal address so yes we do have a fiscal office at Barry so uh we are currently um so we are located in Canada at the moment and um yes yeah, so we do have a fiscal office in Canada and we are also uh you know we are also registered in Canada in case if you are wondering or are we globally recognized or you know on um, all of that so yes we are so we do have a fiscal office at Barry okay um so Unyamai is asking, please, between data analysis or business analysis, which is more lucrative? So both are very, very much, you know, they are very, very high in demand. Okay, so it doesn't matter. It's any of them that you want to go for, they, are, they do two different things, of course. Any of them you want to go for, all you need is your commitment. They are both very, very much lucrative, very, both very, very much in demand. All right, both, very, uh, you know, both easy to learn and uh, you know, high pay and easy to transition into. Okay. All right. So, Aquarium is asking about, um, you know, the cybersecurity um, course duration. So, for the cybersecurity, so you're going to, you, um, the cybersecurity program is for four months. All right. So, it's for four months. So, you get to learn for three months and then you have one month internship. And regarding getting your license, your license in the United States, so you're going to be taught how you can take, you know, there are some cybersecurity exams. So, the curriculum covers how you can, you know, um, read for um, how you, the curriculum, the program prepares you for those exams that you're going to take as a cybersecurity uh, analyst. And then, with that, you, of course, you can go ahead and get uh, get your license of me. So, as regards, you know, um, getting your certification you of course you um that's would that's um, all of that is well um is well noted and then if there are other questions that you have as we get in you know the license route uh do know that you are going to be you know, you're going to be taught by experienced facilitators that you can ask questions regarding these oh how do i navigate the job market in the us in canada how do i you know how do i become licensed to practice in uh in those countries Okay, so Ebera is asking, will it be video-based course or will there be a coach, mentor all the way? So for the business analysis program, so there's going to be, uh, you know, a mentor all the way. So you're going to have live classes. So the way the classes are structured is that on Saturdays and Sundays, you have classes. On Saturdays, you get to join a session whereby you have a one-on-one -on -one interaction with a facilitator, just like what we have now, all right? So you get to learn and you get to speak. And you get to interact, all right? And then on Sundays, you also have, you also have the same thing. But for some of our programs like the data analytics program on Saturdays you have the one-on-one -on -one interaction the live session and then on Sunday you have what we call the watch me do it videos which are bit sized videos that would introduce you to a concept that you're going to be learning in the in another class all right so you watch those videos you get an idea of what you're going to be learning and practicing and preview in the next class and then in the next class you then get your materials all right you get your um um not your materials so you get your case your case study, you work on the case study with your facilitator, of course, um, applying the principles that you learned the previous week in um, the Watch Me Do It videos. Okay, so Noma is asking, please, I'm studying project management. What is my adv what is my advice? Okay, so um, uh, so Noma, regarding that, so we have, um, uh, so it's, if you are interested in project management, so I would say you can either 
take you can take a look at the business analysis program or the scrum master program so those are two programs that hover around project management so i would like to say they are more encompassing than project management but uh, those are the two programs that uh that you know i would say you should take a look at you number know, all right so how long does your reference cover as long as you're a participant with analytics it doesn't matter you could you could have registered two years ago three years ago four years ago we have our records all right so once a reference is requested we take a look at our records ensure that you know you're a participant with us it doesn't matter if you register for a program 2020 as long as you yeah or you are a program uh, or you are a participant with analytics you would get a reference all right uh so gonna get says for full stack data analyst must you have a computer programming knowledge no all right for you to become a full stack data scientist i believe that's what you meant um you don't need any prior knowledge okay so we take you from the beginners level to an advanced level to a level that you can uh, that you can actually get a role that you can get a job and that you can work and of course and cool cash all right so you don't need any knowledge of you know of a computer program you are going to be taught all of that from scratch got it yet all right so that should not be uh, an hindrance to you all right so any other question all right so i guess not so um we're going to call it a day at this point or you know we can call it a night or you know wherever it is you are located of course i hope we had a nice time i hope we learned something or two uh please let us know that you know you're going to get the you know you get the recording of the session you get the slides you get um all of that uh so i think uh cordelia has a question so i'll just take cordelia's question and um i guess we we'll call it a day from then so i'll just take cordelia's question so cordelia please you can go ahead and ask your question Okay, <clears throat> good evening. Thank you so far for your detailed uh, explanation and for making the program a very attractive one. Uh, though this is not Cordelia, this is her husband. Um, okay. are very interested in the program. And of course, we have a road. I registered for business analysis and she chose the part of data analysis, at least so that. Uh, by default, I will also become a data analyst. Right? She also become a business analyst. After you have done your great job, uh, so my own question is to uh, uh, be with uh, the timing of the program. I heard you say Saturday and Sunday. The one I was registering was as if it was only Sunday that I saw in my outcome. So I'm not asking. Am I excluded from that or the Saturday? <laughs> I think okay. I saw that Saturday or so uh, or Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, uh, so what? What's your name, please? Uh, um, Godfrey. Godfrey Ojo. Godfrey. Godfrey Ojo. Yeah. Mm. All right. So, uh, all right. But that's so Godfrey. Uh, that's actually the name of my of my sibling. Okay. Wow, that's so, great. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Right. So, um, you so you fantastic. I love the fact that um you've taken that bold step that you've. Are registered and of course your wife has registered as well and um uh, uh, yeah so for the business analysis and the data analytics program all right the data analytics they have classes on saturdays and watch me do it videos on sundays and the business analysis class uh, they have classes on saturdays and sundays now for the timing we know that we have because we are globally recognized and we have participants that join us from each and every part of the world. All right. And um, what we've been able to do is that we've been able to structure the classes to ensure that it doesn't matter where you're joining in from, that you can pick a time that's suitable for you. All right. So we have on Saturdays, for, for, for instance, and this applies to both the business analysis and the data analytics. We have um um classes from 11 to 2 p.m that's uk time all right 11 to 2 p.m uk time or west african time 11 to 2 p.m all right and then if me and so that's for those in europe those in africa all right uh, you know that region and then if maybe you're in north america or maybe you're in asia or uh you know like where you have like eight hours you know you're like eight hours behind or eight hours ahead and all of that so um you, uh, we have another session that same day that's on saturday the evening so we call it the evening session whereby you get to have your classes from uh, uh you get to have your classes from 6 p.m 
to okay. 10 p.m. All right, okay. 6 yeah. p.m. to 10 p.m. UK time or West African time, and then in Mountain Standard Time, that should be around uh, that should be around um, 11. All right, so 11 to 2 as well. That's Mountain Standard Time, if I'm mistaken now. All right, mm. so um, yeah, so that's that's for Saturdays. Now for the Sunday, like I said, the data analysts they do not have classes on Sundays. They have classes, but it's a self-paced, uh, what we do in video kind of class. Okay? okay. But for the business analysis, for the business analysis on Sundays, all right, you get to, for the morning class, that's for those in Africa, for those in the European um, region, you get to have classes 2 p.m., that's 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Okay? 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. UK time. All right? And then for... Uh, the um, evening classes you get to have classes 8 p.m to 11 p.m okay. uk time or okay. uh or that's that, that's um that's 3 p.m um that'll be 2 p.m uh mountain standard time all right that's 2 p.m est all right that's if you're in canada or you're in north america so where, where are you located uh godfrey okay i'm actually located in nigeria do migrating between uh, nigeria and uk Okay. All right. Great. So, mm -hmm. so that's fine. So, I think, uh, I think the UK time will be great for you. But if you want to, you know, go for the evening class, that's that's fine as well. Uh, no, so you're I'm not limited for, as to. I'm going for the evening yeah. class. All right. All right. I, yeah, want, no I want to be involved, so I don't want anything to distract me. Oh, all right. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you I, so I, I love that. I love that. Um, that uh, I'm enthusiasm. What you are doing. I'm in love with what you are doing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I just know that with time, I'll start talking and speaking the analysis <laughs> that you are doing. <laughs> of course, of course. That, 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 that's, that would definitely be um, that would definitely be the case. Godfrey. And one thing, before I wrap up with you, I want to really appreciate the flexibility, the openness, the rapport you are bringing to it. It is, it is a novel. It's not common. The openness, you. you repeat the sessions, you make somebody to understand, you clarify doubt you. In fact, thumbs up for you. I'm really, I think yours is Thank different. You, I'm not used to yeah. pre thinking, but I also yeah. does the reality when I see it. So thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Of course. Oh, thank you very much, Godfrey, for the for the mm -hmm. kind words. That that is much appreciated. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to seeing you in class. Definitely. All right. Definitely. Of, Definitely. of course. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Mm. All right then. So thank you very much everyone for joining me. And um, I'm sure we all had a good time. Uh please ensure you stay safe and uh you uh you know you uh you diligent, you're disciplined, that you register for the program, very, very important. And most of all, ensure you eat. Food is good. <laughs> I'll see you guys. We're next. I'll see you guys. You. Bye everyone. Bye bye.